different projects uh, dealing with uh, cooperation and uh, working together and participation and architecture and green architecture. Um, ASPN was founded in 1998, 1999. We moved here to Ravelsbach, where we also have the virtual, what we call now, virtual building site. And I will just tell you a little bit about the time when we started. Uh, it was about 2010 when we started with an idea. Okay, when we can make workshops and just uh, build sample walls to, to show people how to built with straw base, with clay, with lime, with natural materials like hemp and flax uh, and wood uh, and wood wool or uh, soft wood boards. Uh, why not assemble all these things together and build the whole house? It was a big idea at the beginning and we started with small houses but uh, it turned out that it's, if you have a quite good network, if you can rely on people, if you have this trust in people, uh, and if you can motivate people to work with you together, and yeah, you start small, but the change can happen. And this is the story about Stronatur, so this was the idea, the name, the brand we designed in 2010 with our uh, non-profit organization, ASBN. And, uh, here you see the, the wall, you will see another picture again, which uh, also Paul Adrian showed, uh, where they pa participated and Gerhard Scherbaum participated in 2010 in building this wall, and it was then developed. So what we do is mainly uh, straw belt building workshops, clay plaster workshops. These are introductory workshops, three days on weekends, every month, uh, the last weekend, usually on each month uh, during the year, we have these introductory workshops and we try to show people how to build and to lose the fear of these materials, of the tools to work with and yeah, how you can work with it and what are the, the properties, uh, what do you need for building a house, how does it look, how complex can it be, how do you plan, all this stuff. So this is the place in Berdorf, it's just the next uh, Katastralgemeinde, the next small village uh, in Ravelsbach. From Ravelsbach is Berdorf, where we have this uh, virtual building site established we have a lot what what the name virtual is because we uh, don't finish things uh, we try to show the process of building by leaving some open wall or the you see the layer behind uh, we have this these workshops uh, now since uh, more than 14 years. Uh, the, this introductory workshops, uh, 2006 we started uh, with these workshops uh, and uh, we, oops, we deal with, yeah, we, we also made this strawberry lion here in the Baroque Garden in the in the center of Ravisbach, a tunnel for a children's playground mainly. Uh, so what do we offer with Stronatur? So mainly we have the construction at the first, so on a foundation. Uh, we will also deal in the future with foundations, but at this point now we uh, make uh, normal concrete foundations and on these kind of foundations we start with our building. So we start with the construction. We have now Martin Büchler who, who is here, a carpenter, Jascha Rosen is here, Ukan Buvo is a, a Spanish uh, carpentry, uh, cooperative who works with us and Holzbau Erlinger is from Baden, he also works with us together. So we, with these uh, carpenters, we built the construction, we also participate partly in this construction, uh, raising the construction. And then we do the infill, so usually the infill is uh, up to the client. Do you want a workshop? It's a little bit cheaper. If you can organize that, we help you to organize that. And uh, we are a team now of uh, about six people. Uh, Florian, who is a certified straw baler. Karin Julia uh, is also a certified straw baler. Did, she did the step course last year. Victor as well, 
He's also here, Carsten Biesmann and Gerhard Scherbaum. Uh, Gerhard, you know from the Einfach Gemeinsam Bauen, uh, he was mentioned by Paul, also he was one of the founders of this Sprungbrett Aspern. Uh, so we do the infill, sometimes it's really nice when the plaster doesn't uh, immediately, uh, when the house is not immediately plastered, then you see the complete house like a straw house. Naturally, we cannot leave it like that. We have to cover it with a plaster or with a wooden facade, uh, a cladding to get it windproof on the outside and airtight on the inside. Uh, I show you now some projects we did this year. This is a project uh, w which was started one month ago in Rusbach um, Wolfgangsee in Salzkammergut. Uh, we have a, here a straw bale base plate and this is one of the options, one of the alternatives. It's not the perfect thing, but it's better than a, a concrete, a little bit better than a concrete foundation. So we raised the whole base plate 50 centimeter above earth, and we put the base plate on screw foundations. Also screw, screws are made of metal and they have a high energy, uh, um, embodied energy, but <clears throat> at least the, the floor is not sealed. You can remove theoretically the house after years when you want to move it somewhere else. Uh, so this is how the base plate looks. We also build uh, roofs with straw, so we usually cover the whole house. When you have a base plate, you have the walls infill and you have the roof, so it's covered from all sides. Uh, it's always uh, adventurous, like here in, in Ernstbrunn, uh, in Lower Austria. Uh, we have a 45 degree wall and it's like climbing a small hill or a mountain and naturally you have to secure yourself, but it's always a fun work of one or two days to infill such a roof. Then we do uh, a lot of renovation, so for old buildings which are not uh, uh, according to the energy standards anymore, we cover that on the outside, in the exterior uh, layer of straw bale, a full straw bale like here, for example, in Plankam Camp, in, uh, in Kamptal, uh, this is the exterior insulation with a full straw bale around. Uh, but we also can do smaller layers. So if you want, for example, just 15 centimeter uh, addition of, of uh, insulation on the, the outside of your existing house, we can cover that. We build a cage out of planks, for, for example, or we do it with battens or we do it with pallets and, and uh, put this in front of the house and then we, the, the house has a better energy standard. If you also change the windows, uh, maybe if they are not according to the energy standards and naturally the roof. Uh, this was a small uh, house we started with Stonatur uh, in Franken Group in Upper Austria. Uh, it has a reciprocal roof. This is what we also do, but here it's more to show you that we do also earth plaster on building sites usually. Uh, we use cop as well. We use cop mainly for plastering, so this mixture of, of clay and straw fibers. Uh, but it's the same material you can make sculptures with. We do lime plaster uh, directly on straw outside, so we usually we shave the straw with a hedge saw on the surface that is a good plaster ground and then we cover it directly with li li lime plaster. In this case, it's, or in most cases, we use lime putty. So, then, kalk, wie heißt auf Deutsch? Jetzt kann ich nicht mehr Deutsch. Sumpfkalk, danke. Sumpfkalk, which is a bit more natural than the, the ready-made lime you buy from the stores because it always uh, uh, contains about five to ten percent cement as well. So this is pure uh, kalk. Uh, we build walls, uh, so any kind of organic forms we, we now can do, uh, or domes like this one in Felden am Wörthersee in Carinthia which was then afterwards uh, lime plastered on the outside and just on the top where the snow is uh, lying on the absolute flat surface, it's a little bit of EPDM, so mm, mm, caoutchouc, rubber, 
uh, tap on the top. We do reciprocal roofs in, con in, in cooperation mostly with Alejandro Lopez from uh, Ocambuva, from Spain. Uh, here in this case it was a carpenter from Salzburg who uh, made this workshop with us in this house in Frankengrub for a reciprocal roof. And we insulate also the reciprocal roofs with straw bales on top. We do uh, electricity because just from the building process, from the logistics, it's necessary that we, when we infill and shave the walls and next week we want to plaster, that we do at least the electricity in the outer walls uh, uh, in between these two workshops. And this is only three days, so we have to put the electricity. This is Gerhard again uh, here. Then we do the step training. We will talk a bit more about the step training. I'll just show you one picture uh, with Dirk, who is uh, somewhere in the back uh, from RFCP and now Federation uh, Eco Construire. Dietmar from Bivena, uh, Helmut, our secretary, and me, we had an assessment uh, in Werden an der Aller for the step uh, training. And uh, what I told you is we have building site workshops. So we uh, consult the clients that they're able to calculate their house, to plan their house with the support of architects, uh, with our support. Uh, our support. And uh, then we arrange carpenters. Uh, we, we, we try to find out who is the best in which situation. And it's always kind of fun, joy stuff. A community stuff. We live there for two weeks, three weeks on the building sites. There's a lot of motivation and cooperation during these workshops. A lot of learning, uh, participation, and naturally it saves also money if you work by yourself, if, if you participate. And uh, about the positive energy, I don't have to tell you uh, when a lot of people have a lot of fun and laugh and, and play guitar or sing or whatever, then uh, this energy is somehow, it's there. And you feel it also in the house afterwards. So you see, these are, uh, for example, uh, workshop participants in the wrapping project we did in Pregarten in, in Upper Austria. Whole house was uh, uh, covered with straw bales. And a lot of fun and joy and uh, motivation, and uh, they want to finish what we what the goal is. And usually we do this in two weeks, and it's always finished in these two weeks with a lot of hands, a lot of knowledge, a lot of exchange. And we learn as trainers, we learn from the trainees, and the trainees learn from us. So it's a really exchange. Uh, I show you some three projects we did uh, this year. We started uh, very early this year in March uh, in Gongdorf. It's just uh, 10 minutes or maybe 20 minutes from here by car. Uh, it is a building site, uh, old barn. And the inside it looked like that. And the idea from Markus Litz, the owner, was I want to have a straw bale house in this barn. A house in the house. So we designed uh, this kind of structure and we made a workshop, uh, two workshops out, out of that. One was the infill workshop and one after that was the clay plastering. And uh, in this case we had the opportunity because there was a roof already over this house, over, uh, our, uh, over our house from the barn, so that we could also clay plaster it completely on the outside. It was just made with clay, no lime plaster. Just a little bit of lime plaster to, uh, to on the outside of the facade. So what you see here is, uh, this is our straw bale house. It's, it's quite small because the owner wanted this house mainly as a mm, living space during the time of renovating the whole farmhouse he, he bought there. And the rest of the barn, was just empty, so there should be uh, a possibility to go with the tractor, uh, go through the barn as well. Um, tiny means, in this case, is about 64 square meters uh, of living space with a sleeping room, bathroom, toilet, a technical room, uh, and a combination of kitchen and living room. This was the team, the trainers, uh, also Alejandro is here, 
from Okambuva, uh, and our step trainer, uh, step steppers. Uh, Yuta is here, for example, from the steppers. So we did the step training in this case for the straw uh, bale training uh, for European professionals. This is David, uh, also a step trainee, who will build a house next year, for example, in Carinthia. This is Tony Auer, our clay plaster. And it looked like that, uh, covered with clay plaster on the outside and on the inside like that. Uh, it's not finished yet from the windows, but because the OMA uses also recycled windows and such stuff. And yeah. The calculation shows that we are in the price always between 1,600 and 2,000 euros, something like that, uh, depending on how much. Uh, um, how high is the standard is one thing and how much are you involved in the process, in the complete process. So it's, the process is not consisting only of building the house, it's also a, lot, a big part is the logistics, how to uh, and where to buy all the materials, how to get them on the building side, the transport uh, and all this stuff. The next project we did in Summerau, it's uh, in the north of uh, Upper Austria, Oberösterreich, uh, near Freistadt. Uh, we did the, plan, uh, the planning with the architects, uh, the, st uh, the structural uh, 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 static, uh, <laughs> the construction. The, we we uh, consulted the clients in where to buy the materials and where to get them quite uh, affordable, we made two workshops there and the plasters and also the plaster finishes afterwards. So this is a house for a family with three, four children, uh, quite a, a, a big family and it's a, the house is a little bit bigger therefore so it consists of two parts, one is the barn in front here uh, above the garage. Uh, and as it is on a hill, it has a uh, concrete foundation and the construction of the main house in the back. From the side, it looked like that, so that you have a sort of courtyard in between these two uh, buildings. And the architects planned that when you look out the window, you don't see these um, maybe ugly houses. Uh, you just see the, the mountains in the uh, little bit uh, distance. We did the infill of the roof here with Carsten Beesmann, also one of our co-workers and trainers in, at ISBN and Stonatur, uh, Florian and uh, Gerhard, Karin and Victor, and Tony. These are the trainers usually on the building side. And here the covering with uh, the diffusion open boards on the outside before the wooden cladding was uh, mounted there. Another project we did in Ernstbrunn during summer this year uh, it was also a combination of two or three units for a step. Uh, so U2 is the infill uh, workshop, U5 is the finishes workshop, we did the clay plaster in this case, and uh, the P2 means practice two. Uh, we had also the practical workshop there. The design was from the same architects in this case. Uh, uh, from Vienna, uh, we work with, uh, and we decided, or the clients decided that they, 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 they had to tear down the old building because it was, uh, there was problems with the ground, with the stability of the ground, and there were problems with uh, the old uh, uh, clay stones, uh, sometimes brick stones, uh, then uh, they were renovated and they were a little bit moldy and they didn't want this uh, kind, they, but they used uh, a lot of this uh, stuff which they teared down from the old building as recycling building materials for their, for their new house afterwards. So this was the construction here, Martin Büchler was the leader of the carpentry team, uh, there the two carpenters uh, worked, uh, carpentry uh, organizations worked together also with Okambuva, with parts of Okambuva. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is Martin Püchler here, you will see him uh, here on the, oops, this one, sorry. 
and Florian and Karin uh, at the infill of the roof. We did also uh, the, the complete infill of the walls in a workshop. Shaving the walls and then afterwards plastering. So in between these two uh, workshops, we have always three days maximum for installing all the house technique in the outer walls, especially. The intermediate walls is, is a thing we can do before or afterwards, but usually we have to uh, have everything prepared for the plaster. So also the plaster, the stucco, what you see here, the reed stucco on the ceilings uh, on top. Uh, we use meshes for the, uh, for the plaster and naturally we have to insulate the windows. Usually we, we only use wooden windows and we insulate it with hemp, hemp wool, calafata band uh, and type it with uh, poly, poly something tape which is windproof and airtight. This were, was the workshop team here in Ernst Brunn. And this is how the house looked before the cladding was made. I think the cladding is quite uh, ready now. And the calculation was about uh, 1,685 euro per square meter. In this case, with a lot of saving, then afterwards there were some uh, additions. Okay, we, uh, the, the standard was changed uh, a little bit, but around 1,600 to 2,000 euro you can count with such a house where you are involved in the whole building process and the planning process and it's a lot of work yes but it's your work and you can decide if you want to do this work or not uh, you can also say I want the ready-made house and schlüsselfertiges house and usually we tell you go to another company but <laughs> so this was a little bit about Stronatur and now I uh, I invite Dirk uh, to come on stage and Susanna and Michael. Uh, and I want to introduce you Dirk Eberhardt from now from the Federation. Um, he does courses, step courses uh, in another way in France. France is a big country, as you know, and there are a lot of trainers and a lot of stop bail houses he will tell you about. Susanna is from Artur in Slovakia. Ruby Sur is near Bratislava. She has an eco center there. Um, she does a lot of courses, a little bit different to what we do in the step courses, in the main courses. And Michael Fischer from uh, Bivena, uh, Bildungswerkstatt für nachhaltige Entwicklung. <laughs> um, and they do uh, big courses uh, called Fachkraftstrohbeinbau in Germany. So I want to show you, and you come a little bit on the side, that uh, people can uh, see the program. This is the program we established, and you will see here Dirk sitting in the back, Ditma, uh, Susanna, and Rasmus Goe, who took over this, what we, what we have designed in six years with nine organizations from Europe. We designed a course, a training for European professionals. It should be a professional course. So we wanted to, we want to have more straw bale builders who are really professional, and clay plasters and lime plasters and all the stuff which is necessary to build a good quality house. Uh, this was the idea because we said, okay, when you want to change this world a little bit at least, and then a little bit more in the afterwards, then you need people who can do these jobs. We cannot just talk about that we need more straw bale houses. We also need the craftsmen uh, to, to build this stuff. And we need the designers and the architects and uh, electricians and uh, installation makers, plumbers, all this uh, as a, a big cooperative or a network, however you call that. Uh, we, ne we never wanted to be a big company like a Generalunternehmer, General, uh, however this is called in English, I don't know, contractor uh, uh, earning money with just sitting on the computer and letting all the craftsmen do the job and then reduce the price of the craftsmen and uh, this is our, uh, no, we wanted, we wanted in the really sense to work with our hands. I was a graphic designer before and I, I, I really enjoy being on the building side and working on the building side with these materials and 
much more than I, I like to sit in front of, 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 of a computer and making phone calls about whatever and uh, counting the money. It's boring. It's really boring. So we designed these eight uh, units. In the straw bale training, you, you can see all this, the units and the handbooks as well on the webpage strawbale.training. So training is the ending of this webpage. And I want to show you the uh, eight units we designed together. One is the introduction to straw and mm, the history of straw bed building. They can rely on this technique because it's the oldest house is nearly 100 years old. Uh, we have from no, no, 1921 a building in France, uh, Montage, in Montachy, the oldest straw bale house, most probably the oldest straw bale house in Europe, which is still existing in the straw is still yellow inside. Uh, so this is the introduction, introduction unit uh, one. The second one, grab prefab. So these are all techniques we can build with, with straw. We can infill them in a kind of construction. And the construction is different sometimes. Sometimes we have two posts, sometimes we have one big post, sometimes we have posts outside, like, uh, and, and like that. So these are the different techniques and we go through all these techniques and show you in this course usually how it's done and, and how it's assembled. And we also look on what are the prefab prefabrication possibilities to work with straw. How can you prefab modules? And in prefabrication, um, it's even more necessary to think about all these logistics and how to transport it, how to... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to, to make everything in a hall uh, when you have a crane and when you have a, a, a lot of tools and you have them there and they are weather independent. But you need to think about all these logistics, how do you get these panels out from this hall to the building site where you want to build with? The third one is uh, what, what we call in straw bale building load bearing, the load bearing technique. So the load bearing capacity of, a, of, this, of the straw bale houses here is the plaster and the straw bales, just. It's in the walls there is no construction, no wood supporting the weight of the, of the house and the snow loads. This is called load-bearing straw bale building. And uh, we show all these compression methods that you have the right density that the house really can bear uh, the loads necessary and withstand the, the shear forces, the wind forces. U4 is wrapping, so it's all about the renovation of old buildings, exterior uh, insulation, thermic, chemical uh, insulation of existing houses. And what you have to think of and not forget uh, that you don't have cold bridges, also Wärmebrücken or Kältebrücken, how you can make this in an efficient way. And if you don't have space for 40 centimeter uh, addition of your wall, you can also make smaller. Uh, areas around this house. This is what we show in this unit four. Unit five is everything which is connected to finishes. So we have the mainly the clay plaster and the lime plaster. We also show sometimes uh, special techniques like uh, uh, colored uh, clay plasters, uh, uh, naturally also the natural colors of the finishes and uh, things like Tadelakt where you have uh, where you compress the surface of a lime plaster that it's waterproof or nearly, yeah, very good waterproof. U6 is a more the technical unit. It's about building physics, so it's the main source for mistakes you do in a building usually when you don't uh, know much about uh, building physics and uh, heat uh, and water and moisture processes you, uh, uh, taking place in your house. Uh, then you can, can uh, make a lot of mistakes. So to prevent these mistakes, we have this building physics unit where we also uh, look on what is sound protection and uh, where we also have an addition of what is sustainable building uh, in itself, sustainability. U7 is the design of the house. So how do I start? How do I start with a 
finding out what are my needs when I want to build something. How much should it be or how big should it be uh, 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 to build that house and how can it look like or should it look like? Uh, uh, how, how, how the ways where I go daily, daily and it's kilometers if you count it in a year. Uh, how short are these ways? How good connected are all the installation uh, the house technique and the uh, water pipes and the electricity and all this stuff. Uh, and we go deeper in the construction plan as well. So it's not just a uh, preliminary plan and uh, the Einreich plan. The, uh, we had this word before. <laughs> 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 permission plan, thank you. It's also about the construction plan and how you uh, design a wall that you can efficiently fill in the straw base because these are cubes usually. We don't build with the round base, we use with the, we usually build with a small base, uh, 50 centimeter high, 36 centimeter wide, and 80 centimeter long usually, but in a variety of a, between 80 and 90. And the last unit uh, we designed here was uh, marketing and communication because we want to motivate the participants of this course uh, to form their own company. We want to assist them a little. What is necessary that uh, you are seen in the world uh, of social media and websites and uh, magazines and whatever, or presentations and lectures? What are the methods uh, to, to deal with uh, when you do something good and you want to spread it in the world like that? So these are the units. Uh, at the end, we have an assessment. It's a, first, it's a written test and then an oral test. And then uh, when you pass all this, then you get the certificate uh, and you are a certified strawbell builder. And it's an uh, Edgewood system. It's a Europe, in the European qualification frame. Um, so it's accepted in whole Europe, uh, what we do. And we have the same structure of this, uh, of these courses, of these trainings, so that we also can exchange with other countries and you can do uh, one unit in this country and one unit in this country like that as a student or as a trainee. So this is for example Karin and I want to, uh, now Karin on the stage, is she here? Yes, and Florian. And Victor. Victor doesn't want to be on the stage, so Victor will stay there. I just show you his picture and you recognize him outside and you can ask him directly what are his impressions of, uh, of the course last year. They did the last year course, it's eight months, and I just want to ask you what were your impressions and the last year and how you enjoyed it like that. Um, yes, hello to everybody. Uh, so my impressions, I guess the most important thing for me is like um, bringing practice and theory together. So first you learn something and uh, for me it makes only really sense if you, um, if you can uh, put it in some real stuff and you feel with your mind and with your body if you can create something, then uh, theory makes, mo makes more sense for me. So this, is the, this was the goal for me. And you did, uh, did with your job, now you are working with us and mm -hmm. you like that too? Of course, otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I would Seems not, <laughs> I, I would not be here, you know, and I would not uh, join all the building sites. Thank you, Kai. Are you allowed to pass it to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think the last year, 2017, when we made it, I think one big part for me to learn was not only the technical and practical thing, also the group, I think, uh, always supported us to contribute and do your best. And this was also very important. And I learned to work in groups. And after all these uh, models and courses, I think, yeah, we work. We like to work together, and that's also the reason why we work now together with Karin and Victor and all the others, uh, which are steppers. Uh, I think that's also very important for me last year and during this work in this year, it was also very important. Thank you both. <laughs>
So before we... <laughs> before we um, go over to how it's done in the other countries, I show you just uh, what we do in Austria. We did it, we started it last year. Uh, it is this uh, 400 hours course, so half of this uh, course, uh, half of this training is, uh, is practice on building sites. So we need the building sites as well for the step trainees that they can learn there. Uh, and uh, half is theory, so mainly in Berdorf, uh, but it can also be in other places. Uh, this is the program, for example, you find everything on that from the stuff on bobulogy.it when it's concerning Austria or on strawbale.training when it's uh, international, when you look for international thing. We do it always in two languages because we see there are a lot of people coming from other countries joining our courses and, and uh, units. So here is the program for this year and also for next year. Uh, yeah, this is about what we did uh, in ASPN. We had 14 participants last year. This year it's a little bit uh, declined the number of participants. We have six uh, participants, three of them are Spanish. And uh, yeah, we move on. So there's also a program for next year. Uh, we tried to, and this was the initial idea to to set up this step course in whole Europe. Though there were nine countries designing this course, we were the first who, st who started exactly according the, this program of eight units. But there are a big variety of different units combined with other units or uh, different programs, cons just depending on how it's funded in the, from the local communities or accepted from the countries, all this stuff. So there's a big, always a big variety and we don't, uh, there's no need for that only one path to the goal. Uh, we, li we like this variety as well. And I want to ask Dirk that you introduce a little bit about the situation in France. There is your... And you go with this. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody. <coughs> so I go into light for the camera. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. So I'm coming from France. I'm German, but I live till 25 years in France. And in France, we have quite uh, luck. We are lucky because there's a big culture of uh, self-construction and about regulation, we have a little bit more possibilities for self-constructor to build with nat natural, natural materials and without being certified materials. So it makes that straw bell building was quite popular in ecological buildings since yeah, we'll say 15 years. So we create uh, 12 years ago the umbrella uh, organization in France, the FCP, for straw barrel building. And in 2012, we um, published the official French straw barrel code. So we had for insurance, for architects, a framework to build with Dwarbell. And at the same moment, we started the training program, uh, ProPi, to guarantee the, um, the competence of architects, craftsmen, engineers, that they know the Dwarbell building code in France. So since 2012, we trained, it's a very small training program, it's five days, to know the principal things about straw bell building. There's a little part of practice, but it's more theoretical training. And since 2012, we trained about 1,200 professionals, architects, engineers, and craftsmen on straw bale building. And <coughs> then we got in the European program to make the long 
training program for professionals and we looked for a possibility to get this training program in the French framework about professional training and with the Federation Eco Construire, which is an umbrella organization for training centers in ecological building. We create uh, a training which is uh, Fachkraft für Strohballenbau, a little bit like the gym. Uh, yeah. And inside this training program, which is normally nine to ten months long, with building site practice and a lot of practicing, we create um, some models about storeball training and we try in some training centers to integrate also the step units inside this long training program. So here you see trainees on a building site to be trained. Um, it's, they made a clay slip on straw bale to glue the straw bales against a wooden board to avoid gaps between the board and the straw bale to give more security of the building. And we made also the assessment for this uh, trainees, so uh, they have a double uh, certification, they have the French certification in the French framework for ecological builder, professional ecological builder, and to be motivated to go out in Europe and see other countries, we give only some units about the step training. Normally it's unit one, about the basic things about store rail, unit two, the infill techniques, unit five, about uh, clay plaster and lime plaster and cladding and the unit six about building physics. And so they get this double certification to be good uh, employable on the French market, but also to get motivation to see in other uh, step training units in other training centers like here in Austria or in Slovakia or in Germany or in other partner organization. And we made a training situation a little bit different like Herbert because we need to <coughs> have uh, assessment person, very individual assessment so every trainee have one model where he will build the framework in wood, will cut the bale, will infill the bale, and will plaster the bale. And if the assessment is okay, he gets a certificate about six units. Okay, it's all. <laughs> So, Michael Fischer from Bivena will introduce you the Fachkraft Strohballenbau, uh, which is also like certified uh, craftsmanship of Strohball building. At first, hello to everybody. It's a second hello, I think so. <laughs> okay, we are living in Germany with our training center, and we have normally we have two associations in Germany. One is the Association for Strobel Building. It's called FASPA. And this association is now 15, seven, 17 years old. And out from this association, we developed uh, Bivena. It's a building institute of Germany for Strobel Building. But not only for Strobel Building, we also do courses for clay plastering or clay work and also we do courses for students from architecture universities. Okay. So what we do, this is part of our step training. We have adapted to German law 
course, uh, we have a lot of problems with the Chamber of Craftsmen in Germany. They're very strict, and so we have had now five years to talk with them, to get into the rules, and so on. And so we have to adapt this to 200 hours of training in all these steps, and 160 are in our rooms, and 40 hours are on the building side. And this is only this, the German adaption. And here what we do normally, we train people to, to find out that they are good in their work, that they can talk with architects and with, with people coming from the authority and not to say, oh, we have to wait for them and we have to wait for the plans and so on. They, we, want to, we want to bring them to the opportunity to go to the architects and tell them, okay, I have the knowledge, you are the architect, but I have the knowledge about store building and I can help you and we can, uh, we can go to the client and we can talk with them and so we find a good version of a house for everybody. And so our first step is we, show, we offer the welcome, we show them the material and said, please, you are in group of four or five persons, do a small barn or a small refuge where everybody is in and work with this, play with, with straw and with the material there. And that's, I think it's, if you see the people that are standing in front of a straw bill and said, mm, what can I do? And then you can see they're getting more and more little and the, the child comes out and said, yes, I've done something like this before and I want to do this now. And so they, they developed a small refuge where they can stay in and can Maybe it's only 10 minutes, but they can live in. And coming out, very, coming out of this very proud and said, yes, it's my first step. I have done this before, but it, now it's, I'm older and it's my first step. And that's what we want to do. We want to bring them to this part to play with all what they have to learn. So what we have to do also, we have to talk about all this. And you can see it was cold there, <laughs> and we talk about what we, can we do with builds, how we can, can we change this, what can we, how can we work with this. We must smell them, and we must do something, but we haven't normally... Did you ever smell a stone, a brick, from a company, and then, no, oh, it doesn't smell very good? No, never ever, I think. On the building side, yes? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> But, and, but they have to do this, and it's not normal, and some of them are builders and coming from the building side and say, if I smell the material, I will die, because they are toxic. <laughs> yeah, some materials are very toxic. Can you, this uh, foam you need for the windows, and say, don't breathe this, and they're standing half an hour around the window and don't breathe. I don't know how this works. <laughs> So what they do, it's all. They do the training from the, for the wood frame. They do all of the training, how to build the build wood frame up, and so on. And they start to coming in the mood to build the house in complete, not only a part. I'm the, I'm the timber frame man, or I'm the clay tech work, uh, clay worker, or I'm only the man for the infill. What we want to do to bring them in their mind and in their heart to work in all together and to find out what's important and they will find out all is important. And so sometimes they have all this fun to bring the straw in, to jump on top of, like we do with our jump program, to jump on top of something, I don't know what. <laughs> And so, time by time, they do all the, st uh, the handcraft or the handiwork, but in between also they have the training course. They have to know what's happened with heating system, electricity, and also 
what's around windows, air tightness, wind tightness. It's the most important stuff for houses that are high insulated. And also, before they sit in their room and learn something about building physics and so on, they also build houses like load-bearing houses and so on. And all this in, is in the training, all the steps we have in our training. And you can see, sometimes they are a little bit proud of what they have done. And that's, with this, they want, have to go out and find new building sites to learn more and to get in more practice. Okay, that's all for Germany. <laughs> Next is Susanna Kjulfova from uh, Artur from Slovakia near mm -hmm. Radislava in Polisur. So hello. Uh, I will now introduce you our situation and what we are doing. Um, uh, so in our country we don't have any norms for uh, natural building. We have um, less than 200 uh, stable houses built and they are not in such a good quality because they are built by self builders and they were not taught or trained. And um, as we established um, NGO um, about 17 years ago, um, we as architects mostly wanted to promote natural building, but we found out that there is no sense in promoting if there is nobody who can build it or actually really do it. So we couldn't just speak, we had to do it. We had to learn the craft and then we had to uh, train the craftsmen or people who wanted to be trained. And we had uh, successfully been training uh, earth plaster uh, courses for eight years now and we wanted to train in Strobel building but uh, the process to come to this training program was long it was even more than Herbert said it was 10 years when I started with this project uh, or program and we are so happy to finally have um, um, a, f a frame uh, which we created together we found a good practice which we can teach and um, first we had to find who can train this uh, <laughs> building. So we selected uh, potential trainers and we sat down and we planned how to, how to teach these uh, units. And we found out our way, we uh, made uh, less session or straw, one straw, two. So uh, because it works better for us, we don't train at the building site. We have a small uh, training center, which is quite limited, and we train there. It's easier for us because we do it beside our jobs. So it has to be really easy to organize, and when we set the date, it happens, because I know it's very difficult to do it on building site and know exactly the date. It's uh, more challenging. So this is our, we thought, easy way. Um, we created texts in Slovak so that trainees uh, would have something. Then we, we created like small, small mod modules and um, um, big, big sheets and something we could use to make it more uh, interesting and, uh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, so uh, th there are other um, pictures, but you will not see them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can uh, I can tell you that um, we thought that uh, it's easy to train to create training situation in the small limited place, but. It's actually quite expensive. We always need uh, material. We always need to build these small walls, uh, structures. And uh, it's a lot of energy not to only build with trainees, but then to uh, dismantle it. And uh, we need quite a lot of space beside the training, storage, and so on. So uh, it's more to it than <laughs> It's not so easy as uh, earth plastering. So now we had an idea that uh, we would find uh, 
a person who would like to have a very small house or shed and we created small modules which we would uh, build during the training so that uh, trainees would also see that it's something more real and it stays, it's not dismantled afterwards, it's better energy then. And also we, we thought that like this we could pre-finance material. So, um, but there is... Uh, uh, well, so this is, we had to think about uh, how to deal with this training and now, of course, we are trying to find out how to teach it in a, in a better way, in more interesting way, uh, so that uh, we would uh, have more impact and everybody would like it. People like it, but we still want, it, want to do it better. <laughs> okay, so that's our situation.